Here we are then, the calm before the storm, as we wait for this field of iconic cars to burst into life for the historic Invitational event today. What is up guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're starting off in a little bit of a different setting, shall we say, where in a classic car race around Suzuka, driving Michael Schumacher's F2002, and uh, we're starting from ninth place. Away we go for the Mini Grand Prix of Japan. So. Yeah, I thought I'd cover this off because we haven't really been given too many actual races to do in these invitational events, so I thought I'd do this in this absolute monster of a Ferrari. I believe it's V10? V10 Ferrari, if I'm not mistaken, but um, so far we got off to a really nice start. Absolutely smashed past most of the field, but we lost all of that momentum as we went through the first couple of corners, and now after tagging the McLaren in the left rear, um, lost the back end, and that was pretty much all of that momentum gone. Um, in the first lap, so it took us um, to the start of the second lap now to actually get back onto the charge and get back onto the uh, back of this train. So, yeah, we'll see what we can do. This Ferrari is very tail happy, um, not very stable, not very planted, so it, it definitely makes for a very lively driving experience. But as we go through here, third gear, uh, really trying to get a nice exit here. We actually ran into the back of that McLaren in the mid part of the apex, but look at the straight line speed. This is where this Ferrari comes into its own. Absolutely decimates the, the competition uh, in a straight line. This is why this car is so OP uh, on this game and why whenever you jump online and do classic car races, this is the car that everyone goes in just simply because of the straight line speed. Just nothing, absolutely nothing can match it. Even on a you know high speed, you know high downfall circuit like this in Suzuka, you can't beat it, um, and we also get really close to the, uh, to the three Renaults who are all really squabbling away here in the first sector. But yeah, this this car is amazing. This really makes me appreciate this era of Formula One. It's so exciting, um, so much more involving to drive um, versus the 2017 cars. Not gonna lie, the twin turbo V6. I mean, it sounds all right in real life, um, but in the game. It's a bit underwhelming, especially when you compare it to this car. But as we head on to the final lap, we've got rich mixture flowing. And uh, you're going to see just how OP this car is in a straight line. Double overtake into the first corner. And, and we got the move done before we even started in, uh, started turning in for the corner. It was absolutely outrageous. Here's a uh, third person replay of this. And um, we basically go like three wide into turn one. It was amazing, but... Yeah, there we go. I think it's going to be second place in this Grand Prix. First place is a long way up the road. But, um, yeah, again, the closing speed was absolutely mad. Had to Almost had to uh, do our best to avoid making a collision there. But as we go through the final couple of corners, it is second place. I believe the guy in the Ferrari up ahead is either in the same car as me, the 2002 Ferrari, or they're in the 2004 Ferrari. Um, either way, um, the first lap that I had just meant that there was absolutely no chance of me um, closing the gap and, and getting the race win there. If I would have had a clean first lap, didn't you know get tangled up, it would have been a different scenario. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you want to see more invitational events like that, let me know down in the comments because I'm never really quite sure whether you guys want to see that. Like if it's a boring race or if it's a boring activity, um, I'll probably more often than not, in not include it. But when it was a race like that, I thought, you know, why not? But... Um, here we are in uh, Baku now for round, uh, what is it, 8 of uh, this 2017 season, season 3, and uh, we're jumping straight into qualifying now in the McLaren Honda. So, yeah, um, we didn't start proceedings off too well, we got held up behind the Sauber, and um, yeah, we had to stick behind them through turn 2. We got a massive toe on uh, that first of the DRS straights, but in the end it wasn't a great lap, we only just squeezed through to Q2 uh, by 6 tenths, but still 12 places. Um, a little bit lower than what we're expected um, of us uh, nowadays in this season. Fernando Alonso unfortunately not making it through to qualifying two. Again, that's gonna come down to his engine, not getting the upgrades and just, he's not gonna be competitive here at all. So yeah, don't expect too much from Fernando unless literally everyone in the midfield absolutely blows up at the castle section, which I'm hoping for uh, once again this season. But Q2, much more impressive affair. P3 uh, drops to P6 in the end after everyone else sets their run. So, you know, we clearly 
have the pace to make it into Q3, even on a kind of weak track um, for us here. But uh, Q3, we have some intermediate conditions and it was actually set to go to heavy rain towards the end of the session. So I made an effort to go out really early to try and get a time in and maybe even um, bag a, a surprise pole position if you know we're one of the first to set a time before it goes heavy rain. But um, yeah, I, it must be said, I think the, the track conditions went went to heavy rain really really quickly I feel like even on this lap it wasn't ideal like I was sliding around a lot more than what um, I usually would in these kind of conditions so um, yeah I was just I was really just holding on for the ride with a low aero high speed circuit it was a bit of a recipe for disaster Sergio Perez goes provisional pole um, I don't know what the time was I can't remember but as we go through the third sector it's a really scary ride through there with the low downforce um, just absolutely skating it through there. If we have, you know, intermediate conditions for the race, which we, I don't believe we do, it would make for a absolutely mental Grand Prix, uh, going through the castle section and then going through those final sequences of corners. It would, it would really make for a, a bit of a survival of the fittest, shall we say. But after we did the first run, the heavy rain set in, like I said, and there was no point in going out again because the wet tyres are slower than Inter's and doing any kind of mileage there would just be a waste and we'd just be diving into our, you know, engine components, a little, you know, unnecessarily. But, yeah, there's the results. Max Verstappen got a five-place grid penalty for collision with Valtteri Bottas, so he'll be starting outside the top ten, so that'll promote us up to P8, uh, barring any other penalties that the AI might have. But, um, yeah, I mean, solid foundation to go from for the race. I feel like we are faster than 8th place. Um, so when it dries up for the race, we should uh, be able to move forward, especially if we can get a few positions off the start. Now, uh, we're also going to do another upgrade. And I'm looking at the drag reduction upgrade, the major one. And um, if we get enough resource points at the end of this episode, then that's what we'll do, hopefully, to boost Fernando Alonso's, you know, standings in a straight line as well. But that's qualifying. Time for the race for Baku. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and starting alongside in P2 is Sebastian Vettel. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Perez, Daniel Ricciardo, and Bottas, Ocon, and a McLaren, Grosjean, and Nico Hülkenberg, Verstappen, Kvyat, Jolien Palmer, and Magnussen, Sainz, Alonso, Lance Stroll and Pascal Wehrlein. Ericsson and Felipe Massa completes the grid. You should have some space going into the first corner, so try to keep it tidy. Thanks, Jeff. I don't know if that space will, you know, last too long with uh, 20 F1 cars all storming into the first corner, but um, away we go here for Baku on the formation lap. The strategy is very simple. One stop going from the supers and then we'll be finishing on the softs, so... Um, there's no strategy element, it's going to be ultimately down to us to move through the field. As things stand, we'll be leading the championship. And as well, it's uh, really important to consider the championship as well. I think we have a 14 point lead over Sebastian Vettel. And important to know that even if things finished as they are right now with me in 8th place, I would still retain 8th pl uh, first place in the driver's standings, which I was really surprised about. So, um, that, that may change if Sebastian um, somehow finds his way. Um, to the lead of this race, but we're going to do our best to prevent that and hopefully continue the podium streak that uh, we've established so far in Season 3. I still maintain that we got a podium in Bahrain, so let's you know, kind of continue that 100% streak going. Five red lights, and away we go for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. How was the start? It looks like it's a little bit wheel spinny as we go up in a second and third gear, but through time one, we got the inside of Valtteri Bottas. Nice move there. Perez is a little bit wayward there, and we got the, the, up the inside of Oh my goodness, I don't even know what's going on there. It's three wide, but um, yeah, we uh, dispatched the Bottas. Perez is still on our inside, and I'm trying to get the slipstream off of Ricardo, and now we're both going to overtake him in a straight line. Ricardo must be absolutely hating life at this stage, wishing he was in a Mercedes or something like that. Um, clearly, he doesn't want to extend his Red Bull contract beyond 2019, especially with uh, Honda Power. Actually, in game Honda Power, better than Renault Power. Almost better than Ferrari, I'd say. But either way, first lap, um, I, I don't even know what's happening here. I think we had a yellow flag back here. This might be for the Haas of Romain Grosjean. He's just completely 
um, send himself into the barrier there. It's, you see that a lot on this game. And even on F1 2016, he just went in a little bit too deep. Probably misread where the braking zone was. And pretty easy to, mistake to make, especially with the proximity of the barriers around the street circuit here in Azerbaijan. But as you can see here, this is Lewis Hamilton battling away with Kimi Raikkonen, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's allowing Sebastian Vettel to uh, storm off into the distance, which is exactly uh, not what I want in this Grand Prix. But meanwhile, we go around the outside of Hamilton, who's had a shocking second lap here. We go purple to uh, the third sector as well overall. And uh, that is us onto the podium. So somehow... We, we're on the podium, and I, I think it's really just come on the back of leapfrogging all these other cars in a straight line due to slipstream. We've just, you know, been able to get the toe and, and close the gap, and, and now we find ourselves in the lofty heights of P3, chasing down both the Ferraris, and now Kimi Raikkonen looks like he's on the move too as he goes uh, to the inside here on the start-finish straight, and Sebastian Vettel has absolutely no counter to that and we're going to do our best to try and close that in so even here in Baku uh, F1 2017 the slipstream as you guys know is not as pronounced as what it was on F1 2016 but still you can see it is clearly worth you know so much time when you can get in the toe of another car we're actually um, slipstreaming Sebastian Vettel now we might dive to the inside not really uh, a little bit too far back to attempt a, a crazy move like that but with the pace we have surprising pace um, we can afford to wait and just see um, if any opportunities do present themselves, we still need to push ourselves through the middle sector. We seem to be losing a little bit of time there. I think the third sector is our best out of all of them. So maybe we're not taking enough risks in the middle sector. Maybe the slow speed uh, corners just aren't suiting the McLaren, which is weird because we, we have a really good chassis. and One that's very comparable to, to Ferrari, but for some reason we just seem to be losing... Uh, a little bit of ground now as we actually fall out of DRS range to Sebastian Vettel. He then dives into the pits at the end of lap 7 and now are relinquished into second place in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And now this is going to be a real true indication as to where our, our pace is now that we don't have slipstream. It's all down to ourselves now to extract the lap time out of this McLaren Honda. As you saw there, Sebastian Vettel was caught up in some traffic and that's um, really going to help me out in my quest to uh, beating him in this race. It looks like he might be doing a two-stop, which, yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't feel like it's the right call. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see how it goes. But um, I hazard a guess to say that Vettel will probably rejoin in front of us, uh, depending how this pit stop goes. We really attack the pit entrance there and uh, make up a bit of time on Raikkonen. And now we need a really good pit stop here from the McLaren boys. Unfortunately, we weren't able to hold up Raikkonen. That would have been, uh, you know... An easy two or three seconds gained um, through free margin, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. But we rejoin on the track. Unfortunately, behind Sebastian Vettel, he's still chasing down the Toro Rosso. And um, yeah, he looks like he might potentially have P2 in this Grand Prix, so long as he uh, has the pace on newer tyres to pull away and get into the lead and then chase me down towards the end. But here's Lewis Hamilton overtaking both Sebastian Vettel and uh, Carlos Sainz there all in one go. So. That's really going to hold Sebastian's process or progress in this Grand Prix because Lewis Hamilton is actually doing the one-stop as well. So that really does help me out. But as we cut on to lap 12, we're now catching up to Carlos Sainz, the guy who was holding up Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. He's really slow. And I mean really slow as we follow him through turn 8 in the castle section. Yeah, this the old super soft tyres are not faring too well for him. We're going to stick it up into Rich Revs and see if we can overtake him. This is a really tight zone through there at the fast left hand that we will run up against the uh, the wall there, mounting the curb, and millimeter close to running into the side of signs there, but we managed to survive and get our way up into B4, make that P2 as Lewis Hamilton pits. So it looks like he's not doing the one stop as I thought he was. It's actually Valtteri Bottas is doing the one stop for Mercedes, flying the flag for those guys, but yeah. Interesting race. Um, interesting how this is kind of shaped up now. I thought this was going to be a, a bit of a damage limitation Grand Prix for us starting in 8th place. We made so much progress in the early stages, but now we have some rear gunners to us. We've got Valtteri Bottas in 2nd, uh, we've got uh, Sergio Perez in 3rd, and they're all doing 1-stops. And Guys like Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel are going to have to overtake all of those guys um, before they even get to me. So, 
I, I think we've got a podium pretty much locked down. We just need to make sure that we hold on to it from here for the dying laps of this race. I believe the Red Bulls as well are doing a one-stop. So again, more cars in between us and our championship rivals. Just unfortunate that Kimi Raikkonen is out in the lead and it's going to take away seven points from us if things stand as they are at the moment. But here goes Sergio Perez up the inside of Valtteri Bottas there. They lock horns through turn one and I think um, Valtteri threw up the hand in frustration. So... Um, clearly not happy. Valtteri doesn't really get too upset too often, so a bit of a surprise to see him getting angry at the Mexican, but um, Sergio makes his way into third place, and he's got a whole bundle pace now on what looks like fresher soft compound tyres. He now goes for a dive in the middle sector towards us, and he looks like he might take away a few points from us in this championship, but no, um, he can't hold it around the outside there, and he stays in third place. Man, that was tense. Oh, he really had a, good, a solid go into the middle sector, but... Uh, we're going to have to be really wise to Sergio here. He seems to be really pacey in that Force India. Um, more often than not, I feel like the Force India um, tops the speed trap. So we're definitely going to have to watch out for him. It doesn't look like he gains a lot of time on this start-finish straight. And I have a bit of a theory behind this as well. I feel like the McLaren Honda kind of deploys all of its ERS on this start-finish straight. Whereas... Maybe the Force India car only deploys half of it, for example. But when we come up to uh, this straight here, I feel like we don't have any deployment at all. We're actually conserving or like harvesting a bit of energy ourselves as well. So, yeah, like we're not weak on the start finish straight, but on that kind of middle straight there after turn two, we have no pace at all and we're really vulnerable to the cars behind. So, really interesting dynamic as to like where the strengths and weaknesses of this McLaren Honda are. And uh, with the new regulations in 2021, we'll actually have control over where we can deploy our you know, energy and whatever. But yeah, at this stage, it's kind of out of, out of our control. But Kimi Raikkonen wins the Grand Prix. Sorry about banging on about boring stuff, technical stuff. Um, we're going to come home in P2 and continue the podium streak in Season 3. Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with that performance. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. So there we go. Uh, second place. You know, it wasn't destined to be an amazing day for us. We started eighth place and I thought, you know, this is going to be a day of damage limitation. And, um, you know, it really turned out so well. We beat Lewis Hamilton. We beat Sebastian Vettel. Those guys ultimately... Um, falling at their demise due to the two-stop, uh, which I you know, thought right from the start, that is not the way to go, and they end up uh, Lewis in 5th, and Sebastian 11th? Now, Sebastian did a three-stop, and he ends up one minute off the pace, so that is absolutely, oh, that's diabolical for his championship. He's going to fall a long way behind, maybe even a race win behind now, so Kimi Raikkonen, I feel, will move into second in the driver's standings, he does, and he is 28 points behind in the standing. So, guys, things look so good at the moment. Uh, not even at the halfway point of this season. Season 3 of F1 2017 career mode. A 28-point lead. We, we can't let this go. We absolutely have to maintain this or even try to build on this if we can. Smash the like button um, for this video if you enjoyed it. Um, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to see plenty more. F1 2017 videos and I don't want to get ahead of myself but things are looking really good for the championship um, we will continue to um, dive into the upgrades and uh, make this car perform a little bit better a little bit faster and hey even if we if we have maybe even a pace advantage maybe we could look at some reliability stuff um, that would prevent us from taking some grid penalties in this season but uh, we're gonna switch out all the old power unit oh, switch into the old power unit parts for practice for the next race, which I believe is Austria. So we'll see how we go there. I feel like I am pretty quick at that racetrack, but um, there's a heavy reliance on downforce in that track. So I don't know if the McLaren will be up to the task there. But yeah, we're going to do the major um, rear, oh, the drag up upgrade. So that should hopefully make us faster in a straight line. And I'm hoping more than anything, this actually helps Fernando because, you know, he's probably one of the slowest in a straight line. And he just loses out so much in the races and... He hasn't been getting the engine upgrade, so hopefully a drag reduction upgrade will apply to his car and make him more competitive because, like I said, we need a competitive teammate. When we're second in the in the constructors' standings, but we don't have a, a hope in hell of winning it if Fernando isn't competitive. So 
hopefully that can turn around very soon. But guys, what an amazing Grand Prix. Things are looking really good and the development still continues. We're not letting our foot off the throttle uh, no matter what happens in this season. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next race, the Austrian Grand Prix. I'll see you next time.